Well, welcome to Coffee with Job on Thursday morning, Wednesday evening or Wednesday afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. Um, as you can see, it's a nice sunny day here and I'm recording a wee bit later, so the sun's in my eyes. Hence the sunglasses. This is not my attempt to look cool. Now, I've got a question for you. Where do human rights come from? We hear a lot about this. Uh, and, and some Christians want to deny that human rights exist. I don't agree. I think they do. I think if we're talking by, uh, by the fact that we as humans have a right or expect to be treated in a particular way, and we also have a responsibility as to how we behave, well, I would argue that our human rights don't come from some kind of advanced progressive liberalism which is actually now becoming an authoritarianism. I would suggest to you that human rights come from the Bible. And one key aspect of that is when rulers think they don't have to answer to anyone more powerful than them, or just anyone. So a guy's in a house, he's stronger than his wife, he's got more control, he thinks, I can do what I want. A boss can think, I can do what I want. A leader in a political party could think, I can do what I want. Now, there, are, there should always be checks and balances, but that isn't always the case. What's all this got to do with Job? Well, let's come to Job chapter 31 and verse 13. If I have denied justice to any of my servants, whether male or female, when they had a grievance against me, what will I do when God confronts me? What will I answer when called to account? Did he who made me in the womb, did not he who made me in the womb make them? Did not the same one form us both within our mothers? If I have denied the desires of the poor or let the eyes of the widow grow weary, if I have kept my bread to myself, not sharing it with the fatherless, but from my youth I reared them as a father would, and from my birth I guided the widow, if I have seen anyone perishing for lack of clothing or the needy without garments, and their hearts did not bless me for warming them with the fleece from my sheep, if I have raised my hand against the fatherless, knowing that I had influence in court. Then let my arm fall from the shoulder, let it be broken off at the joint, for I dreaded destruction from God, and for fear of his splendor I could not do such things. It's just such an incredible and a wonderful thing. Job is saying, I didn't deny justice. I didn't deny justice. He talks about his relationships with his servants. He recognizes the rights of his servants to take him to court. He recognizes the rights of women to justice as well as men. Incidentally, he talks about the child in the womb being formed by God, and there's a justice for the child in the womb as well. He goes beyond the customs of his times and he recognizes human beings as humans and as equals and not as possessions. I think that despite all our talk about justice and human rights, we're, we're going back to treating human beings as possessions. The, 1970, the 1776 Declaration of Independence says this, all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So where are, do human rights come, come from? They are based on the fact that God is our creator. We may live in different social circumstances, but we are all made the same way. Am I not a man just as you, says the slave? In chapter 10, verses 8 to 11, Job speaks of the wonder in which God had made him in the womb, and now he says that about everyone. And by the way, one of the crassest, cruelest, most evil and wicked things is that there are people who say that they are for human rights and want to kill humans in the womb. Millions of them. Millions of them. Ephesians 6.9 says this, Masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them since you know that he who is both your mas their master and yours is in heaven and there's no favoritism with him. The idea of dignity and equality and responsibility. So there's this seeking justice and then there's our concern and care for the poor. 
And Job stresses the importance of helping the poor and not taking advantage of them, giving food and clothing, taking orphans into his home rather than abuse them. Eliphaz had accused Job of not caring for the poor, but that just wasn't true. His, his statement in verse 21, if I've, if I've raised my hand against the fatherless, know, knowing that I had influence in court, then let my arm fall from the shoulder, let it be broken off at the joint. He's saying, this is so much part of my life. James says this in James 1, 27, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after widows and orphans in their distress. There's no such thing as a Christianity without justice. And there's no such thing as a Christianity without caring for the poor. And if you don't care about justice and if you don't care about the poor, then you're not a Christian. You can give me all the talk you want about, oh, I believe in Jesus and trust in Jesus and I believe in God and I pray and I read my Bible. That's no use. That's absolutely no use if you do not reflect the character of God in your dealings with other people. And I, I say that about myself. I'm deeply conscious how much the Lord has blessed us and I need to use that to help people. Well, uh, see you tomorrow. Um, by the way, in that regard, please do go to the Charleston Community Church website, Charleston in Dundee, where my son Andrew is planting a church in a very poor area of the city. And it's just wonderful for me to see that. And I'm very proud of him for doing that. And also feel free to go to um, the Ask podcast, where when we've been talking about human rights, Greg Sheridan and I discuss how Paul was one of the most revolutionary people who's ever been and how actually all our modern human rights stem from the Christianity that Paul spread around the Western world and ultimately to the rest of the world. God bless you and see you tomorrow.